entered six pound class in a rematch of a fight from last summer's Goodwill Games. Brian Valoria of the United States will try and avenge his loss in the hands of 96 Olympic flyweight gold medalist Micro Romero of Cuba. Romero won his semifinal handily over Alexis Nabaldanian of Russia by a 9 2 score. But Valoria, after a close call in his quarterfinal match, won his semi in convincing fashion with a 19-4 victory over Subban Kunin of Thailand. That fight was stopped after three rounds. Valoria led by 15 points. Earlier, we had a chance to speak with Brian about facing Romero and how to reverse the result from last year's matchup. Think about, you know, uh, my mistakes last year, see if I could, you know, um, capitalize on some of his mistakes. I've been watching him throughout the week because I knew that he's going to be in the finals and I knew I, I'm going to meet up in the finals with him. So I've just been looking at his mistakes. He's been dropping his hands a lot lately. So I'm trying to capitalize on that and see if I could land my rights and my scoring goals a lot better. So we're set to go here in the 106-pound division, a battle between the United States and Cuba. Let's go to our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the first bout of the evening. Damas y caballeros, vamos al primer combate de la noche. Ladies and gentlemen, when the bell sounds, the man in charge, cuando suene la campana, el árbitro será the referee from Romania. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the 48 kilogram, 106 pound category, and los 48 kilogramos, 106 libras, out of the red corner, from Cuba, help me welcome, Micro Romero. And introducing his opponent out of the blue corner, presentando su oponente de la esquina azul from the United States of America. Help me welcome Brian Filoria. So that is Brian Filoria. They call him the Hawaiian Punch. He is from Honolulu, Hawaii. He is the United States champion, and he has rolled through the opposition here at the World Championships. And gets a chance to avenge a loss in the good games for Micro Romero. Let's see if he can do it. That's the beauty of some of the international competition. Year to year, on the Olympics, you get a chance to apply what you've learned. That match with Romero in the good will games of last year was the very first international match for Brian Romero. So he has had a lot of experience since then, and he thinks that he's had enough to take Romero. By the way, the Olympic gold medals. He's had a big bowling experience in this competition too. I think it was a tiebreaker in one of his bouts to get the victory. Back and forth, he was able to get the tiebreaker. It's scary when you let it go that far. But after that, he was able to put more good bouts together, and here he is. Gloria is off to a very good start, very aggressive against Romero. One of the things you have to worry about against Romero is his counter punching. Who can forget Eric Morel in the 1996 Olympics going after Romero and getting nailed with the right hand and going down and losing? And there's a good example of the counterpuncher skills right there. So, but really hasn't faced a counterpuncher on this left. So this is a, quite a test for him. There's the left hook from the is Round one, of course, is scheduled for three, as are all of these matches. Or for four rounds, excuse me. Gloria wants to get inside. Under a half minute left to go in round one. I like the fact that he went right after his opponent had to score. He shuffled over a little bit and then scored. No, it's hard to believe that just a one-nothing lead for Gloria at 
for that. Remember that you've got five judges here at ringside that all have to punch it and register a punch and score it within one second of each other. You need three of the five within that one second to score, so you'll see a lot of punching and scoring doesn't necessarily reflect that. Big right hand gets in by Mario. What a difference between him now and when he fought Romero the first time. It's much more confident. Here's the double left hook by Romero. Michael Romero is a very skilled technician. And to go back to your point on Gloria, I think he shows that point after he gets hit. You see a different way. But in this bout, it's after he's been struck. He's able to counter and shuffle over to the side and do something instead of being frozen. And that's the one that's very, very good point. And that's what happens against him. He's so quick handed. Look at the combinations by Michael Romero. Tough man to deal with in terms of defense. Well, he's perfectly on balance after he punches. He always follows up his level. He doesn't take any unnecessary chances, and there's no mistake that he's in the punch. He's rolled through the competition here. In all, he is 49 to 4 with total edge in punches landed against what's landed against him in the overall competition. That's a big margin. It's a big margin for this level of competition. It's a world. Everybody coming here. And at this level to do that is remarkable. So just seconds left to go here in round two. It has been fought on very even terms. Both men doing what they do best and both showing extraordinary defense. That'll do it for round two. Two more okay. to go. We follow Brian Cooper and his partners with Acosta and Tom Don't Musk with the hook. coaches. Got that? Yes, sir. You leave with that hook and he's able to slip a right hand in. Do not leave with the hook. And there is Mike Rowe Rivera, the famous uh, Cuban coach, Sagara, who is uh, Good day, coach, coach the Cubans uh, Good different, but forever. Good different, okay? You got it now. Keep, keep, keep the hands. Hard step jab working, because that's... Valoria doing what is good for him. He finds a way to get inside. Nice combination there with the jab starting it. Gets himself a three to one lead after a couple of rounds. Okay, we gotta do it again. So Brian Valoria, two rounds away maybe from winning the world championship. Second out, round three, second out. 1999 United States champ and the Golden Glove champ this past year. And as we mentioned, he lost to Romero in the Goodwill Games, the last Goodwill Games, by an 11 to three margin. And he is up three to one going into the third round of this match. And you would figure that they would not be telling Romero to make any major adjustments. He's battled very well. It's just the score hasn't fallen for him. He's been able to push Valoria back and do some good work in this battle. Yeah, you can make a strong case that uh, this is part of the part of the way on even terms. Even though it ends up being 3-1. It's certainly more than four punches in the middle, but we've been through that with you on the score. Quick combination of goal and defense by Valoria. Both men have blocked a lot of punches. And the man is going to the body, which often gets overlooked in the computer screen. Yeah, it's good to have it in front of you. Especially with these four round bats, it does pay dividends later. He does get the body very well. Gloria came in here with a 19 to 4 win in the semifinals. He was just dominating. So he comes in with a lot of momentum. And we've seen that confidence here in this bout. And that, that bout came on the heels of the one that went to the tiebreaker. How many times do we see guys in a very tough situation like that are able to clear it? It gives them so much of a tailwind for the next bout. Very aggressive here. Not everything landing clearly, but he was throwing a lot of punches. Nice right hand by Romero. Romero, the 26-year-old, defending Olympic champion, defending world champion here. He's a major guy in the Cuban team. Seconds remaining now, round three, one more round to go. For the Hawaiian touch, Brian Valoria. These have been pretty good rounds. We need to be seen whether Romero can pull it out in the final round.
Welcome back to Houston, where we are set to head into the fourth and second out, fourth and final round. Second out. Ryan Valoria, there you see him, the 18-year-old from Honolulu, representing the United States, and in the red truck, Michael Romero of Cuba, the defending Olympic gold medalist and world champion. We have an upset here. It's all about I have to say, seems very excessive because I think it's about as brief as this nifty from the nature of the balance. And for Romero, if there's such a thing as wasted body punching, this has been the bout. He has done a tremendous job downstairs trying to wear the lawyer down and not getting credit for it. Dave, you're absolutely right. Good hook by Valoria lands a tremendous punch by him. He's got a great left hook. And make no mistake, I think you can make a case for Valoria being ahead of this fight. I just don't know if it's by that margin. You know, you've got the five that have to get in the one second, and that's usually the big part of the problem. Three and five have to do it. I just don't like to see them go to total punches. They give you an excellent reading. I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, both men very active here in round four, knowing that they need to make things happen. They don't know this for Deficit. He would have had to be happy about the manner in which he was conducting the bout. He was scoring on the count. He was going to the body. But Valoria was also in his face the entire time. Valoria fighting with a lot of confidence. Tom Mustin there and Israel Acosta. No matter what, you have to be happy with his performance. He walked into his world championships and fought with such confidence. These guys like to go after somebody who has already beaten them and use that as a barometer of where they are now. Not a bit of intimidation on the part of Valoria. And there is Romero shaking his head. He may have a feeling or some knowledge that he didn't fare well in the scoring. We will find out now. Let's go to Carlos Silva. Ladies and gentlemen, Winner on points, damas y caballeros, ganador por puntos, 9 to 2, 9 a 2. Out of the blue corner, USA, Brian Viloria. Well, Mike Romero actually laughed at the decision, and truthfully, he could laugh at it. That's too wide a margin. But guess what? Brian Valoria fought very well in this match. He deserves a verdict, maybe not 9-2, of course, but certainly he fought his heart out. We have a chance. He did it. Yeah. We will have a chance to talk to the Hawaiian punch, Brian Valoria, after this. Welcome back to the George Brown Center here in Houston, Texas, where Dave Bon Temple is with gold medalist Brian Valoria. Thank you, Al. Brian, you stood on the platform. They played the national anthem. What was that like for you? It was great. I mean, I can't explain the feeling right now. I'm, just, I'm on cloud nine right now. I'm just happy I got through the whole tournament safe in one piece. I thank God for giving me the strength and the power and just everything right now. I'm just speechless. You came in here against the guy. He had beaten you. How did you feel coming in? Did you feel like you'd improved a lot since that time? This last year, I have a lot more experience. Uh, I went through a lot of the, um, in international bouts, so I got so I got more mature during this past year, and I felt confident and I felt strong for this time around. And I knew I could take one this time. Congratulations, Brian. 